up your YouTube, search for Stupid Meadows, watch on your big screen. Or another device if you're at home. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while. What a happy scene. Something new every day for your long term memory. This is so exciting, it is nearly time for a Stupid Assembly. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to today's curriculum assembly. Now, our assembly today is going to be a little bit different, but one thing that won't be any different is how we're going to get this thing started. So, for each other we, every day we, to improve we, and together we will, and our everyday focuses are, and our Stukely motto is, and our Stukely curriculum is, and of course, those four words. Excellent. So here we are, another curriculum assembly. As I said right at the top, it is going to be a little bit different today. And in fact, it might look different for um, a few weeks, taking us up to the summer holidays. I can't believe we're already talking about those. But anyway today's assembly. We're going to start off um, with a bit of a guessing game actually. So it may be after I've given you some clues, teachers might want to pause briefly to take some answers. So I'm going to start us with the clues, but I just need to grab my book first. Okay, so here is the clue. What is going to be the focus of today's curriculum expert assembly? Now these are the clues. This curriculum area, kind of part of another one, I suppose, this particular part of our learning, it says that it exercises the brain. It can be seen as a form of entertainment. It helps to improve concentration and focus. It improves sleep, apparently. It increases your general knowledge. It is motivational and it reduces stress. Okay, those are the first set of clues. Just in case you're not sure what it is that they might be talking about, here's something else. So a, a very clever person once said that this word mm, is a gateway to learning anything about everything. It's a really famous quote. This part of your learning at school is a gateway to learning anything about it, about everything. So what could this activity be? Pause me now if you need to. So I'm now going to read you the entire quote. Reading is a gateway to learning anything about everything. And yes, you heard it here. Reading exercises the brain, can be seen as a form of entertainment, improves concentration and focus. It improves sleep. Okay. It improves general knowledge. It is motivational and it reduces stress. That's apparently all of the benefits of being a reader. I wonder if you knew any of those. I wonder if you actually guessed that that's what I was talking about. So yes, today's expert assembly is going to be all about reading. And you might be thinking, well, how can you be an expert on reading? And, and what kind of experts are you going to use? Well, we're going to use experts that are part of our school. Because yes, you heard it, Stukely Meadows actually has expert readers and the reason we know we have expert readers is because we have a number of children who are um, millionaires according to accelerated reader and to be an accelerated reader an accelerated reader millionaire you will have read one million words or more so if you're reading that much that tells me that the readers who are millionaires must be experts so before we get meet today's experts, let's find out a little bit more about reading in our school. So, well, how does it start? What does reading look like? Well, and why do we do it? Well, reading, I think, has two key purposes in terms of school. All the other stuff that I read you is really important as well. It has two key purposes in terms of school. One is that it is a foundation for all other areas of learning. You have to read successfully to do well in everything else. 
Um, even in maths, for example, you have to read the questions before you can answer them. So reading is really, really important for helping you achieve in other areas of learning as well. And another really important, we want you as a school to be good at reading because we know how important it is. So that's why it's such a big focus for us as a school. But the other thing why reading is so important to us as a school in terms of why we think it's important for you is because it actually is fun and relaxing and pleasurable. Let me show you what I've got here. Look at that. I've brought in a pile of books. I thought I might share them with you. Now, I am a bit of a reader and these books, these are good ones. These two books here, it might be hard for you to kind of really see in terms of on the screen, but I just want to show you that one. Can you see how kind of tattered it is? And this one is a bit tatty as well. Hopefully that tells you that these are old books. They are really old and those are books that I um, have had since my childhood. Um, Heidi Greer is up, I love Heidi. If you've never read it, read it, please do. And then Peter Pan and Wendy, the original story of Peter Pan. Absolutely love that. It's got scribbling in and everything where um, probably when I was a bit younger, I thought that was okay. Don't do that children, you shouldn't do that to books. But those are some books that I've got there. So those are books that I had as a child, really loved and have still got, and my children have read them as well. Well, my daughter anyway. So books are really, really important to me. Then I think that reading um, or not having a book to take on my holiday is the end of the world. No holiday is a holiday for me without a massive pile of books. So when I went away at Easter, I took um, a few, quite a few books with me and I'm just going to show you a couple of them. Um, I read this one, really enjoyed it. And it's all about Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII. And it's part of the series. Um, I'm not sure I was supposed to read the, the last in the series um, as the first one. But as I kind of know the stories of the Queens, I felt I could get away with it. Really, really enjoyed that. So I'm trying to um, read some more of those in that series because I've decided that I like Alison Weir and I really like that series of books. And so now I want to read the other five. Um, I just need to find some that are a good price or borrow them from the library. That's my plan. Um, I also read this book. Some of you might know that um, one of my roles in school is, is um, looking after geography at our school. And this book's called The Power of Geography. Um, and it wasn't quite what I thought, really, but it was really, really interesting. I found out loads and loads of stuff about various countries around the world and why they are important. Um, and there was loads in there that I really didn't know. Um, and I didn't expect it to be quite so um, interesting, actually, but it was actually a really, really good book. And I learned absolutely loads, but it was still a really good read. So you can enjoy the reading and still learn at the same time. So that was a good one. Um, at the moment, I'm reading this book. And this book is by Richard Osman. Now, Richard Osman, some of you might know, if you've, if you've ever heard of the programme Countdown, he's the guy on there. So I'm reading that one at the minute. And that's the second book in a series of books by him and I really like them they're funny so I've been enjoying those um, so as you can see reading um, is something that's really important to me and I love it and I could talk to you all day about books that I've read but that's not really the purpose of this assembly um, so reading we want reading for all of our children at school to be something that helps them in their learning across every area of learning. But we also want it to be something that you enjoy doing, that you do indeed find out that reading can um, help you sleep. It increases your general knowledge. It reduces stress. We want you to find reading entertaining and pleasurable. It's really important to us. So that's why reading is such a focus for us as a school. We have reading assembly, don't we? We really um, encourage you with your accelerated reader programme. We start in, in foundation stage, learning letters and then putting the letters together to read words and then the words become sentences and the sentences become books and then um, the books become even bigger books and, and, and so it goes on. Reading is vital. So with that in mind, I have approached some experts at our school to talk to us a little bit about how um, we can all become experts in reading. So without further ado from me, let's listen to them. So here we are with today's experts and they are our year five reading experts. They are 
our millionaires. Yes, you heard it, everyone. They are AR millionaires, every one of them. So, who have we got? I'm Sam from Beach Class. I'm Luke from Beach Class. I'm Edward from Beach Class. I'm Jacob from Beach Class. I'm River from Chestnut Class. I'm Harrison from Chestnut Class. I'm Amelia from Chestnut Class. I'm Grace from Chestnut Class. I'm Isabel from Beach Class. I'm Sala from Beach Class. I'm Amy from Beach Class. Brilliant. Okay, so here we have our today's experts and their area of expertise is of course reading so what i want to know then is now we know what you are experts in what is the key to becoming an expert in reading how do you become an ar millionaire i think it's just you need to focus on reading you more need than other things. You need to set a time where you read and keep to keep to reading at that time. You need to have a schedule of reading. You need to try really hard. How long do you need to read for? Do you reckon? Um, I'd say if you want to read your by the end of the year, maybe thirty minutes per um, day. But sometimes you can do more. Sometimes you can do less. Okay. Just kind of add it up. Any others, any other little tips for success from anybody else? So we've got a schedule, we've got a routine. Don't, don't try and become a millionaire if you don't, try, don't try and become a millionaire if you, if there are, if you don't want to, if you don't want to go through the pain of having to read a book every single day. And also find a series of books that you're really yeah, passionate about. That is a great tip from the back there. Find a series of books that you like. That seems to me like a really, really good idea. So we've got to schedule and stick to that time. But everybody, sometimes there are challenges. It can make it difficult. So how do you overcome the challenge? What are the challenges actually to becoming an AR millionaire? So how might you overcome those kind of problems, everybody? I think you just need to focus on and realise that reading actually will help you more than some of the clubs in your life. You should, you, you should try and read at a, a time not, not too late at the evening not, and, not, and then not too early in the morning and try and, try and, and, try and make sure that no clubs will get in, in the way of that. You could set an amount of pages that you have to read yourself some challenges maybe. sounds to me like some excellent advice so a big thank you to our year five reading experts we know there are millionaires and experts all across the school but a big thank you to our year fives for helping out so there we have it i hope i know the sound quality wasn't brilliant and trains went past and then other children came past at the same time that i was filming that in the afternoon but i hope you could hear most of what was said um, by the children because I didn't give them any script really. I fed them some questions and then they just gave me their thoughts and their ideas, which actually was best I think because that was genuinely how they felt. So all of those top tips about getting a reading schedule, about making sure that you kind of prioritise reading in your week, um, spend, give time to it, make sure that you kind of pick books that you really like, think about authors that you like and maybe read other books by the same author, all the stuff that I, the tips I gave you there really. 
um, finding a series of books that you enjoy and making sure that you kind of read all of those in the series. There were lots of really good ideas about becoming an expert reader and what they do or what they have done to become expert readers themselves. So I hope that you found that assembly interesting and useful. If you're not there yet, you too could become the next AR millionaire. So next week, well, I'm still planning on finding other experts in school and I've got, already got some different ideas in mind. So you can look forward to that and perhaps it might be you that I'm calling on. OK, everyone, have a great week. See you next time. Oh, I tell you what, I tell you, I love that. I love that children are now becoming experts. Yes, you are. Come on. Brilliant. Right, let's finish up with some birthdays. Hey, 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 it's time to say we've got a stupid birthday. Hey, 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 it's time to say we've got a stupid birthday. <laughs> oh, come on! We've only got one birthday today, and it gives me great pleasure to say happy birthday, Gustavs, in year two. He's a massive bingo fan. He's a massive fan of our lucky bingo ball. Yes, he is. Have a great day, Gustavs. Lots of celebrating. Tell me all about it when you see me. Right, let's finish up with EDK. And we are learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Everyday knowledge for you. And we are learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Everyday knowledge for you. Okay, EDK, uh, religious books. What is the holy book of Christianity? The Bible, that's right. Which religion is the Vedas the holy book for? Hinduism, which religion is the Quran the holy book for? Islam, and finally, what's the holy book for the Jew, Jewish people, Judaism. The Torah, that's right. I've got loads of elements here. We're gonna do the whole lot. We're gonna go quick. Just before we start, got a couple of new ones. This is the element zinc. This is the element zinc. Now remember, an element is the most basic part of everything around us. You can break everything down into simple, simple parts and they're elements. This one, somebody asked for this. Somebody said, can we have mercury? Yes, you can. Interesting, that's mercury. Okay, right, let's go through, let's go fast. Copper. Argon. Helium. Titanium. Phosphorus, aluminium, potassium, gold, carbon, iron, silicon. Neon, oxygen, fluorine, silver, hydrogen, nitrogen, sodium. Tin, zinc, mercury. Wow, that was a lot of elements. Did you get them all right? Most of them right? 
We're learning to remember things worth remembering. Really quick check, our queen right now is called Queen Elizabeth II. Before her, her father was king. What's his name? King George VI. Before King George, we had a king for a very short amount of time. King Edward VIII. Before Edward, we had King George V, and I don't have a picture, but before King George V, we had King Edward VII. King Edward VII, an interesting fact, actually not interesting, when I was a teenager, when I went to secondary school in King's Lynn, which is in Norfolk, it's about an hour and a half drive, when I went to secondary school, the one, uh, I went to a school called Springwood, but the school down the road was called King Edward VII School. It was named after King Edward VII. Yes, it was. I mean, that's not interesting at all. Okay, um, just before we go, in which year did the Vikings invade Britain? 693, in which year did the first man walk on the moon? 1969, what happened in 1939 and ended in 1945? Second World War. What happened in 1914 and ended in 1918? First World War. See you next. Oh, let's finish with a tune. Ah, oh. I know it's Swan Lake, Act Two, Part Ten. But who's the composer? Tchaikovsky. Come on.